Welcome, this is a recorded session of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Conference of the PKI Consortium. This conference would not have been possible without our sponsors in Trust, HID Global, and PQ Shield, and the organizational support of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Working Group of the PKI Consortium, in particular in Trust, Logius, TNO, and CWI. So now we have a very interesting panel uh, on hardware uh, uh, cryptographic modules. Uh, we have three panel members, uh, and I, of course, like to introduce to you to them. So first, Blair Kevinen, uh, Kenevin, Director of Alliances at uh, Thales. Blair has 30 plus years of IT cybersecurity sales, channel marketing and business development experience. Blair continuously expanded his cybersecurity and cryptographic expertise, starting with Symantec and several cyber startups, including, including Chris Salas ITS, Thales, Infosec Global, Crypto4A, and since September 2019, back with Thales Global Technology Alliances team, including the quantum cryptography portfolio. Blair recently uh, uh, represented the Canadian Forum for Digital Infrastructure Resilience to articulate the standards and government guidance at the Mobile World Congress. He's an avid presenter, startup consultant, and IT industry contributor. Blair holds an honester BS BA from the Indus University of Waterloo and Wilfrid Laurier University, Ontario, uh, Canada. So please, Blair, can I ask you? Ben? Our second panel member is uh, Giuseppe Damiano, Director of Product Management at Antrust. So uh, Giuseppe is currently Director of Product Management for the Enshield uh, product portfolio um, offering at Antrust. Giuseppe is a senior expert in developing and managing PKI solutions and infrastructures, data security, and electronic payment systems with more than 30 years of experience. During his professional career as CTO of Qualified Trust Service Provider, Giuseppe has successfully deployed large-scale projects for major Italian banks, insurance companies, and certification authorities, managing more than 20 million qualified digital certificates using solutions developed in-house. Notable achievements, including setting up one of the biggest qualified remote signature infrastructures in Europe, remote signature service solutions capable of hosting large numbers of certificates independently of the HSM capacity, designing HSM solutions to manage data security for electronic payment instruments. And our third panel member is uh, Volker Krummel. Uh, yeah. uh, Dr. Volker Krummel is a distinguished expert in the field of cryptography, currently serving as the chapter lead for post-quantum cryptography at UTMACO. With a robust educational background, Volker holds a PhD in cryptography, uh, demonstrating his profound expertise in this specialized field. With over two decades of ex dedicated experience in cryptography and IT security, Volker has consistently contributed to the advancement of secure digital systems. His extensive knowledge and practical insights have been instrumental in shaping the landscape of cybersecurity. In his current role as chapter lead for PQC within uh, Utimaco, he continues to be at the forefront of pioneering efforts to address the evolving challenges posed by quantum computing to cryptographic systems. His leadership and dedication make him a vital asset in the quest for secure and resilient uh, digital infrastructure in the age of quantum computing. So uh, thank you all. Um, and I immediately have a question for all of you. Uh, oh, I have to go with the other side, sorry. For our online viewers. Um, so Blair, uh, what do you think are the biggest PQC challenges that you see on the road towards getting PQ ready HSM products at the customers? Uh, certainly, I, and I will, will not speak for my esteemed colleagues on the panel here, but for, uh, for everyone that's been paying attention over the last couple of years, the, uh, there is no such thing as planned obsolescence here. Um, if we had anticipated all these things 10 years ago, perhaps, but um, our, our challenge, and I think all of us here share the sh same challenge, I think we're the three dinosaurs, if I understand it correctly. <laughs> um, we, we all have to look at the um, existing uh, infrastructure um, incumbency of where our, all of our solutions exist today. Our biggest challenge is in the field upgrades. And uh, prior to this, obviously with Qualcomm and others, um, the, the good news is at uh, 
for the most part, we can do, if not a hybrid, a temporary upgrade in the field to address whether it be a hybrid implementation from an HSM point of view uh, or a full-on implementation. It's still going to be a trial and error uh, approach, but I think the biggest challenge is, do I need to rip out everything that I have and replace it with something new? And from, from our perspective, it is not at this time. Um, but being that use cases uh, vary, uh, expectations of performance vary, uh, cloud implementations vary. And by the way, I should also say, what is the definition of an HSM? Mm -hmm. Is an HSM a network appliance? Is an HSM an embedded uh, uh, capability with, for, for cloud infrastructures, for the Googles, the Amazons, and, and, and others? Um, it's all of these things. So there is no broad brush to say that all of this will be uh, upgraded in the field. Some may have to undergo some changes, but from our perspective, um, it's a case by case and, uh, and, a, and a slow churn and a very much a trust but verify uh, with the cooperation of our, of our customers and, and those that are, are consuming these HSMs. So you're really already uh, aiming at uh, reusing the current hardware and doing in the field uh, uh, upgrades. That's right. So uh, surprisingly, Several years ago, um, and, and we didn't anticipate this, uh, we have an adjacent capability called a functionality module. And some would say, well, that's a bit of a, that's not within the confines of the HSM itself. No, it was always designed to be, uh, if you will, a, a, an adjacent capability, a staging mechanism, if you will, for uh, running any type of algorithm or, or custom code that you may want to run with the, within the HSM. Um, surprisingly, that became a perfect opportunity to, to embed the open quantum safe stack or other post quantum uh, libraries um, and, and allowing organizations to, to test. And that's back to my point of we're not even through the gate yet. We need to test, we need to try, we need to work with the partners, uh, all the PKI partners here that are also delivering solutions that have a root of trust requirement. So we're working together collaborating in real time, literally paving the road in front of us uh, for various things from code signing to PKI to TLS implementation. So I think that opportunity to shift from a functionality module into firmware is upon us and will be in the next next 12 months. All right, thank you. Then maybe, mm. Volker, for you, uh, the same question. What is your view on the, on the PKC challenges that, uh, that uh, Utimaco sees? Uh -huh. So I think for the uh, for the customers, the, as we saw yesterday, all the processes and the, the recommendations how to start, I think the initiation is is the biggest obstacle for each for every customer. And um, um, as uh, as we heard also uh, today, um, changing changing your algorithms, making your decision is a is a very hard and complex problem for the customers. So they need support in that. And uh, as we heard also yesterday, it's you need to test and to, to do proof of concepts. And for us, it's it's a very um, important thing to to help the customer in taking these steps. So building your first test environment, uh, lowering the barrier of, of of changing and playing around with PQC algorithms, because we see today, the lithium is selected. We still don't have the the standard, which is not not a problem from our side. But for the customer, of course, it's a it's a uh, it's a barrier and it's an obstacle to to start, let's say, doing productive code and implementation on that. So this is why we, from the UT Marco side, support uh, in the sense of that we provide the algorithms as firmware modules, firmware extensions for our HSMs, uh, so that you can load them onto your onto your existing HSMs. Um, we also provide a software simulator for that, so it's a piece of software that. You can install and you can download from our web portal and install and uh, uh, behaves to c completely like a, like an hardware security module from the functional perspective. So of course not from the performance and from the hardware security perspective, but you can you can use your um, your testing environment, scaling environment. So you can you can have multiple instances of this and directly check uh, how your implementation, your system will behave on a functional perspective. And if you want to go a step further, um, you can of course have the stuff on the hardware on, on on premise as you as you want to have. But we also offer this uh, HSM as a service, so you can have this as an online service. So you can 
do your estimations and your, your measurements on, on like for example, speed and performance uh, mm -hmm. uh, things. For example, if you have a uh, peak uh, peak situation that you that you will face, and then you can check how many signatures, how many uh, cam operations you you will will uh, able to do per second or per minute, something uh, something like that. Yeah. And I think this is the the from from our perspective the the most important part to to get the customer where he is today uh, and help them to to do their first experiments and do their first um, yeah uh, estimations and of course um, support in in going further on that to to have a high and and uh, highly integrated and and secure integration of of hardware security modules and we are talking here now about the classical hardware security module like <laughs> a server component not like a the embedded part yeah yeah and Giuseppe uh, also for you uh. okay so PQ is a journey for our customers mm -hmm. and we need to let me say satisfy all the customer requirements and in particular we are really focusing on safeguarding the customer investments so we are working on offering a what we call crypto agile flexible HSM platform. So we can optimize that HSM is fully PQ resistant and PQ ready in a few weeks or a few months or whatever. Mm -hmm. So there are so many uncertainties that to be analyzed and verified. We are focusing in the near term to offer the new uh, algorithms and we are uh, approaching in a similar way like Thales and Ultimaco. So we have uh, a secure enclave in which we are offering the PQ algorithm, which is the first, seems that it's the first priority for our customers. But we are also working on extending the HSM architecture to be PQ resistant because so the HSM is part of the IT infrastructure and it has to be PQ resistant because it's part of the surface attack. And the challenge is to offer a flexible platform that could be upgraded in the field with incremental upgrades that will uh, extend the HSM security. So there are, there are different topics. So we are focusing on the algorithms, protecting the HSM keys. That's uh, maybe the most precious asset in the HSM. Protecting the integrity, the runtime environment, communication between application and the HSM, protecting the firmware. So it's, it's a learn journey. So the challenge is to offer a new hardware platform in the near terms that could be a better in the field uh, to guarantee and to safeguard investment for the next year, because we cannot imagine that the customer would change the HSM every year. It would be very good for <laughs> us, but <laughs> that's not the case. <laughs> yeah. So when do you think, right, and see, no, not, not in any time of months, right, because first the NIST uh, standards, the final standards have to get out, and then I presume there are still needs to be certification, et cetera. So when do you, sometime in the future, do you see clients would have uh, PQ-ready uh, HSMs? The PQ-ready will be uh, an incremental approach. So I think that the security requirement will be upcoming uh, in an incremental way because some, some challenges are unknown and so I do not expect that NIST is going to preview everything in advance. Uh, I think that as we have with the, the standard PIPs or common criteria certification, security requirements are increasing every year, year over year. So it means that I'm expecting that we are going to have the first certification schema that would consider the first bunch of security problems, and I would expect that we will have ongoing. Uh, and so that's the reason why we need to focus on a flexible architecture that will be capable to expand and to improve the security in the field. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Then maybe, of course, uh, we want to uh, make this interactive. Are there any questions from the audience uh, for our panel? Oh, yeah, go ahead. I'm very curious how you will uh, see the um, role of stateful hash-based uh, algorithms, because HSMs often have a very high availability um, requirements and needs uh, extensive backup restore procedures, that kind of thing. Uh, on the other side, you have to have a state that you can roll back on. 
do you see um, stateful hash-based algorithms to be suitable to be implemented on native sims? Maybe I can take this question. Or Please. <laughs> um, so we we see at the moment that the stateful hash-based signatures are very very uh, attractive to customers because of their their properties. And uh, as I talked about yesterday, we we have a, a proposal how to to solve this state handling uh, or to address this the state handling problem. So the, the basic thing is here that you cannot simply backup restore keys and distribute these and use this mechanism to distribute the keys from one HSM to another because then you you will violate the security requirements. Uh, but of course there are let's say um, uh, if you're using HSMs that provide a very high let's say security environment, there are there are um, systems and and mechanisms that you can securely transfer this this key and state information. And securely in that sense means not only confidential and authentic, but also uh, keeping in mind this this uh, state uh, and, and state handling uh, properties. And we propose some kind of, of mechanisms for that. So, but we also of course see that we are we we are not the only uh, uh, manufacturer of HSM. So we we highly um, collaborate with uh, with uh, NIST and with all the let's say uh, market. Uh, Competitors, let's call it like mm -hmm. it's a, a competition. But on, on this side, we have to collaborate and work together that we have to end up with a with a compatible solution for the customers, that you are not trapped with a with a single uh, company and with a single product, single brand. So uh, we propose this solution, and we think this is a secure way to distribute and reasonable way to distribute state information and, and key information, um, for the stateful hash-based signatures um, and. Yeah, we'll we'll in the next month we'll we'll distribute this and then contribute with all the others to to have a common let's say at least a common understanding and common sense uh, to address this problem. Yeah, so for instance, with, uh, because uh, hash based signatures, they, these are the, are the standards that are already out there. So is this what you're currently working on and to get that deployed first, or uh, is really Kyber and the lithium more the the focus? I'll. I'll, I'll yeah. I'll take a step. So I, all of the above. All of them. Um, <laughs> and I think that there's, um, in real time, to, to Volker's comment, uh, behind the scenes, there's an act of collaboration and discussion, much like I think I use the analogy that w this is not something that uh, we need to get our elbows up on and compete against. This is something that we're all held to account on how to deliver this as a standard. Um, so this has been the challenge over the last few months is a very emotional discussion about uh, code signing as it relates to SB 800-208 and, and lots of feedback, uh, which I think speaks highly of the integrity of, of how this is coming about in real time, as opposed to thou shalt. Mm -hmm. um, speaking as an HSM vendor, the fact that you don't back something up is absolutely contrary to the whole context of HSMs in the first place. So for that, we have to look at this um, realistically and provide alternatives, not just we're, that's not possible, or we can't do that, or we don't support that. So there's there's an active discussion, and I think that there's going to be, I won't predict the future, but we, we don't have the luxury of time, but we have to be careful. So I think before we flip switches and implement um, the conversations going on with NIST, and specifically with, with CNSA 2.0 and how this is all going to come about, um, I think this is going to work itself out in the in the foreseeable future uh, in the meantime all of the pki vendors i think with no exception uh, solution vendors can test and play with hardware devices from all of the above and and move forward in parallel as opposed to hands mm -hmm. uh, you know arms crossed waiting for the eventuality of of, you know, of where this is going to go but I, again there is lots of emails going back and forth between a, a very uh, tightly knit group of individuals, and we're all in the same same boat per se. So yeah, because NIST uh, standardizes these hash based signatures, but at the same time put restrictions on it. Right, Correct. you cannot clone this to state, and uh, a consortium of uh, of uh, industry also let like how can we actually implement it? And there were sort of uh, still problems with how how to interpret this 
to actually be FIPS uh, compliant. Is this already clear that, that uh, uh, how to do it properly? Maybe uh, I can add one thing, okay, which, sure. is, which is from an HSM vendor, mm -hmm. if it means selling more HSMs because selfishly that's a great thing. Um, well, sorry, but you have to buy more HSMs because you have to, to anticipate the number of signatures, the number, and so on and so forth. Again, this runs contrary to how you scale. HSMs are not, uh, in, in most organizations, the most dominant appliance in the rack. Mm -hmm. um, we're underpinnings, <laughs> we're infrastructure. Um, we wish we were Palo Alto <laughs> or, or Cisco some days, right? But uh, um, that being the case, as a networkable device, we, we, we serve the, the community of, of interest, and, and that's one of the things that um, we have to be mindful of. So we all think that we're going to sell more HSMs, uh, more so than ever, because of the onslaught of PQC. Let's be very clear. There's never been a better time to point to an HSM for the inherent capabilities that it provides for key uh, storage and key generation and QRNG and all those things that often are taken for granted. But I, I, I just want to make it clear, we are working together on this. All right, I, uh, I get a notice that there is yeah, an online question. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, in addition to what you're already uh, mentioning, uh, Blair. From your testing so far, would a firmware update of the HSMs would solve the hybrid transition to the new algorithm and cipher functions? Okay, then. Was that directed at me? Well, it's to all of you. <laughs> So maybe I'm taking. Repeat the question if you don't mind. Yeah. So if you could. Yeah. Repeat again. Yeah. Okay. From your testing so far, would a firmware update of the HSMs would solve the hybrid transition to the new algorithm and cipher functions? So th the firmware cannot solve the the overall problem at all. So the firmware is part of the bigger picture. So yes. So we. With a new with a, with a new hardware implementation, so doesn't mean that if a firmware is uh, an extension of the HSM, doesn't matter. It's it's a new HSM implementation in 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 the hardware which solves the algorithm problem. Yes, we are going to help to migrate in the hybrid approach, but we also need a new HSM platform which is also capable to guarantee that the keys are protected. Because so transitioning to new hardware is just part of the problem. But if the keys cannot be protected, we, can, we cannot guarantee the protection of the keys. The application is transitioning to another set of algorithms. They suppose that they are secure, but they aren't because the keys, which are the root of trust, have to be protected. So it's not sufficient just to have a new firmware, which is offering new hardware. This is just part of the story. We are working on new HSM platform, and we are working on uh, upgrading the existing platform to offer better security. And as I said, this is an ongoing approach. So customers have to realize that they can rely on the current infrastructure, on the current HSM at the moment for a while, but they will need to migrate to new HSMs in the future. It will be in few months, in few years, depending on the technology availability and depending on how our capacity to, to, be, to run very fast or whatever. But so the, the firmware upgrade is just part of the problem. All right. We have a question from the audience. Right, so the, my question is about uh, uh, what do you see is the role of HSMs uh, in terms of uh, code signing? You, you discussed that a bit now, but um, uh, the, the movement in the industry seems to be towards keyless signing uh, with SIGSTORE and even certificateless signing with the latest announcement from uh, OpenPubKey. I, I didn't get the, the question fully, so maybe can, sure, can you repeat quiet. the last part? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, the movement uh, to uh, uh, in the industry uh, on the topic of code signing yes. seems to be towards keyless signing and uh, even certificateless signing. So those are two projects uh, from Sixtor and, and OpenPubKey that seems to be gaining a lot of traction in terms of container signing, artifact signing, uh, things like that. And what do you see is the role of HSMs uh, uh, in that sense? I'm not aware. So, 
I think my, my, my first answer would be something like, okay, if, if you have this keyless, so the, the main main task and the main um, um, yeah, task of an HSM is to protect keys and to, to build, let's say, a secure home for, for the crypto cryptographic algorithm and, this, and the secret key. So um, maybe this is the reason why we are not, of course, addressed with these with these approaches, mm -hmm. because we are we are doing it, let's say, in the in the proven and the classical way um, for that. Yeah. So I think this will be my my first answer. But to be honest, not not knowing too deep uh, uh, about these projects. I'm in agreement. So at the end, so we, we are focusing offering solutions that are protecting keys and so. That's that's the main strategy for for us. I, I agree. I, I think that there has been um, there's always going to be alternatives, and and uh, I think we will mm -hmm. all be look, look and and customers would certainly have to evaluate those alternatives and look at those as options. Um, speaking from uh, my vantage point, I've seen these types of approaches quote before, um, and again, it depends on the use case. I think there's there's an aspect to code signing. For example, uh, are we going to be doing cloud-based code signing? Are we going to do, use on-prem devices and on-prem code signing platforms uh, for operational security? And, and context is some organizations feel uncomfortable. Uh, not everything is, is running in the cloud. Mm -hmm. Not everything scales to the cloud from a performance point of view and a latency point of view. And with the new algorithms, um, you think it's tough to do things across the cloud now for simple things like TLS performance using cloud HSMs? It's not always as good. You you cannot get the kind of, with RSA, performance, for example, uh, just for the latency introduced by the cloud. So I think if that's a conversation we should be aware of, I, that's the first I've heard of it. Um, <laughs> but that isn't to say that I shouldn't be aware. But I do appreciate that a lot of organizations right now are focused on the task at hand and, and the HSM underpinning um, is something that we provide today. And I think that transition to perhaps another uh, a potential other way to do it might come over time. But being that the variables that we're, uh, for example, going through right now is we don't even know within firmware what kind of performance we're necessarily going to get with the lithium, mm -hmm. with Sphinx, with any of these things. and hardware upgrades may in fact come. It took us, what, 10 years to get RSA and ECC optimization fixed and figured out in HSMs. And by the way, HSMs shelf life is five to 10 years. That might not be the case over the next five years. We might have swap outs. Um, I, I, again, selfishly speaking, I, I, maybe we should be swapping out HSMs every two years. But, uh, you know, <laughs> and especially if it could provide performance benefits, right? If you Absolutely. get additional hardware in there. Sure. Uh, I mean, my iPhone all of a sudden isn't running very well when the 14 came out. So maybe we should be doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I hear there is a. Yeah, there's question. another question uh, for Giuseppe. Um, has your company thought about PQC thresholds, cryptography support on HSM? So could you please? Has your company uh -huh. thought about PQC threshold cryptography support on HSM? So I, I think that we, we so I, I think that so that the, the PQC should not be focusing just on on the on, on the HSM because I think that we, we are just focusing on on the wrong starting point. Uh, and I, I think so. If we consider how much time it takes to transition from test to IES in the banking environment, it spends two decades. I think that we are focusing the, our priorities on the wrong uh, starting point. And I think that's so. The HSM is part of the picture. We are already offering new hardware. It's there, there. They can be used and tested. We are working in background on the new hardware platform. I think that we should start focusing on how the application can migrate using using the algorithms. Are the customer aware about the crypto assets? Do they know how to transition? Which are the challenges in terms of regulatory or in terms of business requirements? I think that there are so so many other priorities to be solved 
in advance. That's be worried about the HSM. The HSM will be ready in time because at the end, it's just a technology problem. Uh, I think so. I really appreciate the session previous with Qualcomm in which so they presented very well how they are going to fix the problem. And again, but this is another technology approach. So th there are so many, so many other topics that are ignored. For example, so in, in, the, in the smartphone environment, what's the impact on the battery if I introduce so many power consumption? So I think that's the priority. It's not the technology. It's the transition. And the transition will be really long because the experience say that in, so the transition of the companies that are not IT vendors is really, really long. So the, the technology providers are still working um, on the PQ transition, the HSM provider, the chip manufacturer. So we are working. We will be ready in time and with, with as I said, with an incremental approach. I think that companies should be focusing on the transition, which is really longer and maybe is more challenging. So that's, I don't know, that's, that's the opinion. Maybe, maybe I can, I can add, add something on it. So, of course, we have several new approaches um, within cryptography, threshold, multi-party computation, stuff like that. So we look all at all of these new, not maybe new, but but uh, newly applicable uh, trends in, in, in cryptography. But to be honest, we, we are, let's say, with having the use cases in, in, the, in the mind, in the back, it's, from our perspective, not a comparable uh, solution to the current, let's say, setup of post-quantum crypto in a combination with an HSM. So, for, for example, multi-party computation, the, the idea is to, to just distribute sensitive computation over the world so that you you are much more secure in the sense you you need to be to hack certain sites uh, to to get information about the key and then you can compare it with a with a single hardware in your rack doing just doing the things as it did the last 20 years and you to be honest you come up with the idea okay this this new approach is, is from a technology perspective very highly attractive it's nice it's it's cool technology but if it comes down to hey, what I what I what I'm going to use to, to for my use case, I go for the for the bare metal and for the for the uh, HSM design approach. Let's let's call it like this. It's it's not a, a, a the bare metal thing. So it's it's a, it's just the on prem thing that have uh, people have in, in their mind. But you also can have this as as a service, but with a with a mindset that there is some kind of really hardware protected. Uh, environment, a secure home, let's say, for the for the crypto. Okay, I think we have one more question from the audience. So, in the in this competition, we've seen contributions uh, from academics all over the world, but uh, uh, there's uh, the event now, and in general, I mostly see Western governments, Western industry moving towards PQC and prior prioritizing uh, the PQC transition. Uh, what about the rest of the world? Uh, do HSM vendors who are uh, maybe uh, at the leading edge uh, of PQC transition see movement in the rest of the world, or does do other uh, governments have different priorities? Are you are you hinting at QKD as an alternative? Is that what your question is? No, just your general impression uh, 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 whether. Uh, the PQC transition is primarily a, a Western uh, priority at the moment, or whether other uh, areas are moving similar and we're just uh, location biased. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. Great question. <laughs> uh, so I, I would go for the last. So we are heavily location biased, of course. Uh, if we see all the um, activities, for example, in, in Asia regarding quantum technology, there's, of course, much more in the media about QKD and, and quantum computing phys physics uh, uh, news than maybe PQC, because on that part of the quantum world, PQC is a bit the less, less uh, attractive, sexy part mm -hmm. of this one, for the media, at least. Um, and I, I think, as we, as we heard in, in several talks before, China, Russia, all these these countries are also developing their own standards. 
maybe not with the same media attraction, maybe, maybe not the, the same impact as, as the NIST uh, process, because NIST, I think, attracts more, uh, most of the researchers in the field uh, than, than, let's say, uh, uh, China or, or Russia, but still there's, there are many activities. This is one side, and on the other side, of course, you, you have to think about the addressable market with these standards. So, and, the, and about the transparency. So it's, of course, much better, and, and we highly appreciate the transparency in the NIST process, because you can contribute, you can see what's going on, uh, and you, you know what the current status is. This is a bit different uh, in, in the other, let's say, processes, yeah? Well, actually, uh, we're sort of running out of uh, time, so uh, you can always ask them uh, later. Uh, but maybe uh, our panel members want to make a, like a final statement, uh, maybe on like how the PQC transition might actually do also drive new innovations in uh, HSM sector. Sure. Blair? Yeah. I'll, I'll take a stab. I, I think we're all equally excited about the the paradigm shift, and you know, speaking from my perspective, I started my career with Luna One. Uh, that's Chrysalis uh, in 1996 and did that for many years and then took a hiatus and came back and here we are again. Uh, difference being is that we're moving into the post-quantum side of things and uh, the innovation that's coming out of this is, is spectacular. Um, uh, the, the unilateral approach to this is, is welcome. Um, but we're, we're, the challenge that we see going forward is, is optimization, is uh, applicability is viability and transitioning into PQC uh, such that it 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 renders itself as back into the obscure. It, it's going to work in the background. It's going to be transparent to all of us. It'll be part of the, the the fabric by which we all operate. I think that's our challenge from an engineering point of view. They're meeting it head on, and I and I'll mention that we are our own consumers. Uh, just because we build something, we have 27 business units with eyes on us saying, if we're putting satellites into space as we do, um, the telemetry better be secure. Um, we, we manufacture billions of smart cards a year. Those, those chipsets have to be PQC safe. So this isn't just us shipping it HSMs to our customers. This is us consuming our own. Yeah, we have to, <laughs> maybe Volker have a short, a short one. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have really running. <laughs> I'll try. Uh, so, so my my message this is, is from the, from the heart is, we relied for the last forty years upon on cryptography and on cryptographic concepts, uh, talking about and, and and joking about DES transition to to AES something like that, but we have to keep in mind that the cryptography really served to, or did a very well job in the last forty years, and this is not only because this was a nice invention, but it was an it's a it's a it's a very act active and nice community of, of cryptographers, and they provided a very, very strong technology to, to serve all the use cases that we can all earn more or less some, some money with it. And so my message would be, hey, listen to the cryptographers. If they recommend transition, then just listen, because, hey, remember the last 40 years? Think about the next 40 years would be a good advice. Yeah. To, to listen to the cryptographers. All right, thank you. you uh, so just in, in pure words, I would say, so PQ is a revolution in, in terms of challenges, but mm -hmm. it's not the only one. I think that so the transition to the cloud environment is imposing us to hope for an HSM, which is cloud friendly. And so there are new challenges that are upcoming. Some of those are already solved or partially solved. So the, the evolution of HSM is part of the entire picture, and so we are working on the on the stream and to offer something that could be consumed according to the new requirements and new business needs. Okay, then uh, please let's thank uh, the panel and uh, all our speakers. In today's complex, fast-paced world, you need a partner who can help secure your digital transformation so you can drive your business forward confidently. Someone who can fine-tune and integrate the secure technologies that enable mobile identities, digital payments, and a hybrid workforce. You need a partner who will have your back so you can stay focused on the road ahead and accelerate your organization's growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion.